Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven and today we're finishing the pick and place feeder. This is the third video. It's taken me three videos to get this like really nailed down, but we're gonna do it. I'm confident, I'm pretty confident. I hope, I hope by the end of this video, I have a working finished feeder. Yeah. <laughs> So last time I figured out what I was totally doing wrong with the mechanics and decided to go with a worm gear N20 motor. It's really cute. It's just gonna plop right in where the other motor was and get rid of all that bevel gear crapola. What I also did was order the circuit board for it. And yesterday the boards came in. I was very, 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 very excited opening them up yesterday. <laughs> and check them out. They are awesome. And here's the super cool part. I also ordered boards for the indexing wheel. Ordering PCBs is really just a custom way to get a very precisely cut 2D thing of a very specifically known thickness. You happen to be able to put traces on them, but fundamentally that's what it is. So why not also have them do something like make a mechanical part? Also, because they're a PCB, you can plate surfaces. Because it's a reflective sensor, the reflectivity of the thing in front of it matters a lot for getting a good clean signal out of it. So I figured why not plate those surfaces that I want to reflect in solder. This is like such a hack. <laughs> this is not at all what PCBs are meant to do, but I think it's gonna serve its role pretty well. Ah, oh, so cool. So, I also bought a whole bunch of electronics that I'm gonna use to populate the main motherboard for the feeder. And then I'm gonna put all the mechanics on it, put all the tape guides and the motor mounts, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is really coming together. Let's solder them up, solder them up. This might be the smallest chip I've ever had to solder. This insanely tiny little thing at the end of my tweezers is the motor driver chip. See that tiny little thing? It's crazy. This is what's gonna drive current through the motor when I tell it to from the microcontroller. The pads are barely even visible when it's laying flat on a board. Most of the contact area of the pads is on the bottom side, so it's hard to tell if you've even soldered it the right way. Here we go. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got everything soldered right. I've got my little programming Arduino hooked up to the ICSP header, so I should be able to just plug this into my computer and send a program over to the microcontroller on the feeder. Hopefully, the program I'm gonna send to it is just blinking the LED on there, just to like see if I can program it. Walk before you can run. And if that works, then I'll start doing some cheekier stuff. All right, I got a basic blink sketch. Here we go. All right, upload using programmer. Oh! Yeah, it looks like it went. It's not lighting up though. What did I do wrong? PD5? Oh, maybe it's just the wrong pin? Let's try this. <gasps> yes! <laughs> oh, it works. It works, it works, it works. Oh. Wow, that <laughs> was, <laughs> it had me going there. Cool, okay. So now I'm gonna try messing around with all the other chips on the board, like the motor driver and the optical sensor and make sure that those are working. Yes. Okay, so motor's hooked up. I wrote another little quick sketch just to test the motor driver. The motor driver lets me control the motor at different speeds. So I have two different speeds in there, full throttle and a little bit over half. Okay, here we go. And up we go. This never gets old. Oh, look at it. This is that really, really tiny chip I showed you earlier, the really small one. I was really worried I didn't solder that thing right. Wow, this is such a relief. Now you can just imagine one of these guys on there. Cool, okay, so last thing is getting output from the optical sensor. This is the thing I'm most eager to find out about because it was the thing I had the most trouble with the last time. But I have these super reflective indexing wheels now, so hopefully it'll be just fine. All right, 
Test number three. I just plugged it in and I am getting output from the serial monitor. I think it's reading that my sensor value is 64. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it into graph mode so we can see actually what the output is and try spinning the wheel. Here, let's get you so you can see. All right, so it's plotting something. Oh! What? That's so cool. So as I'm spinning the wheel, oh, that's interesting. The top peak is all bumpy. The bottom peak's really steady. So the bottom peak here of this graph is when the sensor is shining through the wheel, so it's not getting any reflection back. It's a really low signal. And then when it's high up, it's the reflection it's getting back from the solder plating on the circuit board. I wonder if that plating like isn't even. That's so cool. I'm finally getting a signal out of this thing. Okay, so my suspicion was correct. There's kind of an uneven amount of solder on these little pads. And because it's rounded or like has little divots in it, it's reflecting unevenly. It's not a perfectly flat surface that the optical sensor is reflecting light off of. It's bumpy, so the light's kind of going all over the place, and I get that kind of crappy signal on the top. In the future, if I get these pads plated with gold instead of solder, then I think it'll be much more flat and I'll get a more clean signal out of it. Cool, so now it's just taking all those things and putting them together. I got motor movement, I got sensor readings, all the parts are working, all the constituent pieces, now they just need to come together. Oh, baby, here we go. I did it. I did it. <laughs> it freaking works. Just happily clipping along, moving forward its little tape. From the testing I've done so far, it seems pretty repeatable. The tape that I've been using has little NeoPixels in it, and the length of those on the tape is two pips. So it has to go through two of the little windows on the indexing wheel to go through an entire component. I don't even have a PID loop implemented right now. This is just very naively looking for like a max, a min, a max, a min, and then the threshold that I set. It just does that for going through two slots, and that's it. That's all it's doing. And it's really repeatable. I mean, you can see from the footage, it's like the LEDs are moving to very close to the same position. I'm sure a PID loop will get it just that much more accurate, but it's already darn good. Using the Worm Gear gearbox on this N20 motor was such a good move. It, it makes things so much easier. What I realized though was I don't need to keep the indexing wheel so big in diameter. The bigger in diameter that it is, the worse mechanical advantage that I have for pulling the tape forward. I had to keep it big before for the bevel gears because I was taking advantage of that diameter to get a good gear ratio with the gears. But now, it makes sense to make it as small as possible. The bigger that I make it, the less force I can actually apply to the tape. Something that doesn't work is the film peeling. I was hoping that this geometry here with this uh, FDM printed part would peel it back, but the gap between that kind of printed blade and where the tape is constrained underneath is too big. So the film will just kind of fold back and keep on going through. Right now I'm actually thinking about getting like an X-Acto knife blade and kind of screwing it in to the bottom side underneath this little ridge. And that way there's like a really sharp, clean thing that's slicing up the film and folding it over instead of relying on like a print to do that. Now you might be asking, Steven, why are you not putting this on your pick in place? Let me answer that for you. It fits beautifully, but it's way out of the range where the head can actually pick it up. So that means I'm going to have to redesign this whole machine. <laughs>
so that this thing can get here. Yeah, so that's gonna be a video. Now it's integration. I have this subsystem working, but getting this to talk to the pick and place and getting the pick and place to say, hey, I want you to move three pips forward, three pips on the tape. And then if this thing has a problem, it can say back to the pick and place, hey, I'm having an issue, stuff like that. That's next. I want this pick and place to be able to talk to up to 32 feeders. So in order to do that, I'm gonna design a circuit board that lets OpenPNP on my computer talk to all 32 of them really easily. And I'm calling it the piggyback board because <laughs> it's piggybacking on top of the functionality already built into this pick and place. So in the next one, I'm gonna design the piggyback board and build it up so it can make this talk to that. Don't forget to check out my Instagram page where I post pictures and updates about my projects way before they come out on YouTube. I also now have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help me out there, there's a link in the description to become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Woohoo! I did it! I did it! I did it!